Hello, welcome to another video of the MR2 Noob. Today we're going to be looking at how to maintain the air intake system from the air box all the way to the throttle body. This is just a good thing to do when you first buy your Spider. You know, make sure everything's in working order. And it can also help solve uh, check engine lights. If you have anything, say, like running rich on banks one and two. If it's both banks, chances are it has to do with the air intake. It's a pretty simple job. Just remember you'll be dealing with some electrical stuff, so you gotta be uh, careful about that. Nitrile gloves is an option. I'm not wearing any because I don't quite care. <laughs> but make sure to get nitrile gloves because latex gloves will be dissolved by certain things on and around the engine. Without further ado, here are the tools you'll need. You'll want some kind of lubricant. I'm going to use this silicone oil spray. It's approved for anything from rubber to metal. It's really great. I got it from an airsoft website. Don't know if it's still sold there, but you know, WD-40 works too, so that's fine if you got that. You will also want some compressed air. This is just to get all the dust off the top of the engine. You can see mine's pretty dusty. And this is a great thing to have handy. You'll also want some math cleaner, mass airflow sensor. You can get this from any hardware store, auto, auto store actually. Uh, I got this from O'Reilly's. You will also want a 10 millimeter socket or a wrench. Uh, I have this one and it's really only to take the battery post off. You'll also want some needle nose pliers to get in and unhook some of those hose clamps. A toothbrush, oddly enough, I'll get into this one later. A flathead screwdriver makes this a lot easier just to pry off some troublesome connectors. And a crosshead screwdriver just to remove all these different screws. So first things first, let's take off the engine. Let's take off the battery post, sorry. When it's loose enough, you can just go by hand. Wiggle that off. And store it somewhere where it won't hurt itself or anything else. Right down there works. Now on to step two. Now that the battery post is disconnected, we're just going to remove a few veins which went along the air intake system. First, we'll want to unplug these two. Not really unplug, just remove. I'll get these out of the way for now. There's also one that runs around the air intake box. We're just going to pull that off from both sides. There we go. Now it's all loose. Now that those veins are off, we can focus on disconnecting the top of the air box. For this, just get this out of the way, you'll want to take your crosshead screwdriver and unscrew your MAF. There's two screws on both sides, and don't worry about mix-ups. They go in the same way, and the MAF sensor is directional and it's keyed, so you won't be able to insert it the wrong way without trying really hard. So that should just pop off. Assuming you actually untighten the screws all the way. You may notice my math is a bit higher and uses different screws. That's because I've done the, something called the math mod. And I'll go over this in a later episode. So now that your math is off, you're going to want to disconnect this electrical connection. Which is safe to do because we disconnected the negative connection on the battery. Mine is very stubborn. So while holding it very securely, make sure to ground yourself on the body of the car first, by the way. I'm just going to pry this off. Put the flathead in like this, then just kind of rotate it slightly. Really helps to get things started. Uh, there we go. I'll be more careful than I was. And this is your math sensor. We're going to clean this off right about now. Now we're just going to go over cleaning the math. If you look at it, you'll notice there's this little bulb right here. That bulb looks to be some kind of capacitor or resistor. Either way, we can go ahead and clean that off if you need to. But the real goal is right in there. While you can't see it, right in that little area I'm showing you guys inside the math sensor, there are two little wires. And the goal is to clean off those two little wires without breaking them. So spray them with the math cleaner and then make sure not to touch the wires with the little red stick at the end of the math cleaner. 
So here we go. Uh, to read the directions on the math cleaner, it'll say to spray 14, 15 times. So I'm just going to do a quick demo right here. It's a dry evaporation uh, sort of uh, cleaner. So it'll just evaporate off and leave nothing behind. Just spray right into that little crevice I showed you earlier. And also says spray every other connection. You know, spray these areas. It's a cleaner. Shop rags are great for this because they're pretty absorbent. Okay, if you get any on your hands, you'll start to feel it evaporating off and it feels really cold. That's some thermodynamics for you right there. Fifteen. Okay, we'll just leave this there now to dry off and evaporate on its own. So here we are again, back at the main air intake system. Now I'm going to blow off all the dust around here. I didn't blow it off while the map was on there because, uh, well, it's an airflow sensor. I don't want any, like, air to get in there, possibly break the wires. It's just over precautious, but I like being like, being like that. So I'm just going to take another towel here. Just kind of wad it up. So it can plug up this hole. And now that that's in there, we're going to pull that wire to the side. Get out our can of compressed air. Got to pull these tabs off the top. And now we're just going to blow the dust off. Now that all the dust is out of there, let's just start disconnecting some of these electrical connections. The first one you might want to go for is right here on this valve. Just hit this little tab on the back side right here. And sometimes you need two hands. Just wiggle it, wiggle it off and yeah, set that aside. The next one you'll want to get is right around here and I'll reposition the camera so you can see it better. So here's that next connector. You can see it's right there. I'm just going to try to keep the camera steady while I reach back there and remove it. The clip's on top. Just press it down. There we go. Just put that off to the side right there. And that about does it for electrical connection. I'm just going to look at how to disconnect the hoses. So as you can see there are a number of hoses which go to components that attach to the air box. And for these you'll want a pair of needle nose pliers to get at them. We're going to start off right here with these and just take your needle nose pliers, put them around the connection, squeeze, lift it off. And this will just let you to uh, disconnect the hose by hand. There's another one way back here. Hang on. Just going to rotate that real quick. There you go. Squeeze. Pull it off. And the last one is way down there. Okay, so I just moved it with my hand up to an easier position. I'm going to put the pliers on it. Squeeze down. And move off. It's just easier to do with the pliers. You can do it by hand, but it might hurt your fingers. You don't want to cut yourself on metal, especially metal that's covered in this kind of rusty stuff. Now that all those hoses are off, make sure you reach down and just kind of start carefully wiggling them off. Okay, so I just moved it with my hand up to an easier position. I'm going to put the pliers on it, squeeze down, and move off. It's just easier to do with the pliers. You can do it by hand, but it might hurt your fingers. You don't want to cut yourself on metal, especially metal that's covered in this kind of rusty stuff. Now that the little clamps are off, we can actually start moving these hoses. Let's get double check this one's off all the way. Grab it. Just slowly wiggle and pull off. That one's out. These two are the easiest. Same with this one back here. Just kind of wiggle it off. There you go. Trying to damage that valve in the process. This one down here is always tricky. Gonna reach down, give her a good tug. Just see that the first time. Reach down. Just give it a good tug. There we go. 
Now all those things are off and that's all we need to do to make it easier to remove the airbox top. So first things first, and moving the airbox top, you want to get your screwdriver, put it into here, and just undo these little clamps. Just get it to where they're nice and loose. You want to get this one, the other one's way back there. This next part's kind of hard to see, but if you look back here, way down below, there are two metal clips. One right here, one on the other side by the battery, right there. And we just gotta pop these off with your screwdriver. It's one down. That's the other. Okay, now that those clips, hoses, and clamps are all off we can finally start to remove the top of the air box and separate it from this piece right here. Just grab both pieces, kind of wiggle till this comes off, push this down to the bottom, kind of off to the side. Don't worry about it. And then you can usually pull the top of the air box off. That's the clamp decide to go back on. And there's that piece now. So now we're at the top of the air box off. You can see the air filter down there. We can just grab this piece, maneuver it out. Like so. Here you can really see the air filter. You can double check that guy, make sure it's all good, still clean. I'd say change your air filter out every time you change your oil. I'll have a video on that coming too in about another 1,400 miles. And now we can focus on this piece back here. So now that the top of the air box is off, we can focus on this guy right here. Now if you're getting PO171 and PO174 codes, I believe those are the ones for uh, running lean on banks one and two, it's usually a hole back here, if not a leak, somewhere around the air box. So this can also help with that. And what you're gonna wanna do is try to get these two little guys out of the way. I like to stick them back here and this guy back here you can start trying to get to this now this one right here will get in the way if you can see it but I don't like taking this one off so as long as this is nice and loose back here you should be able to grab twist it off and if it's being a pain just grab some of that lubricant I talked about Put it back here and spray just enough to get in there and help you pull this piece out because trust me it's annoying so twist and ease it out okay there's that now comes the difficult part maneuvering but you can get this out without removing anything else And there you have it. Now this piece is usually where you get all the trouble with your uh, running lean codes. Something you can do is if you have access to this bit, take your screwdriver, pull this off. This doesn't go to anything, don't worry. And some people like to stick uh, tubes going from fog machines into this guy. Then they'll close it back up and turn the fog machine on and look for where the fog comes out of. It's a possibility, but you can also just do a physical, physical inspection now, what you want to do is uh, just kind of bend it around. Really look for uh, holes and other such things. You plug up the other two ends and blow into here with a mouthpiece. Don't stick your mouth directly on this guy. And if it's dirty like mine is, you really can't see anything. Toothbrush. Now you've taken everything apart, time to put it back together again. If you're not going to be putting it back together immediately, so you find a problem immediately with this little bit of your air intake, you want to take a shop towel, maybe a couple, clean ones preferably, and stick this in the opening 
of your throttle body because you do not want to get any dirt into that throttle body. But putting it back on immediately, so we'll just trash this and try to re-maneuver this bit on. It's a lot easier taking it out, trust me. Those hoses up. This down. Let's make sure this doesn't get caught. And it's back. Reach back here. Thought I'd show close up. This is what the back near the throttle body looks like. As you can see it just kind of hooks onto it like that. You put some lubricant on, like that silicon lubricant or WD-40, it makes it a lot easier. Then just kind of wiggle it on. I'm doing this with one hand, so sorry for shakes. Just kind of wiggle, 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 wiggle. And it's just about on all the way. I'll finish it with both hands. Just a note, you'll know this little bit right here is on properly because it will there'll be a noticeable give. You'll be trying to put it on, it'll be hard, 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 and then immediately it'll get really easy. Not so you know it's on exactly where, all the way. Don't tighten it up yet though, because it still needs to be able to freely move to get this airbox on. That brings to putting the airbox on. So, take your airbox top, and just kind of reverse whatever maneuvers you did to get it out. Get it down under here. And in the back, there are two little posts that it goes into. Now I should move the camera right now to try and give you a good look at those. So there is one of the little posts. The little airbox vein right now is in front of it. We see those two little squares on the bottom. Those are the bottom of where the thing posts into. And the other one's on the right side. It's right down there. That'd be a little out of focus. Let's see. That's where it fits into. We just gotta make sure it fits all the way into those before we uh, tighten anything up. Okay, so we're just gonna Push the airbox into both posts, right and left. Make sure it's sitting pretty. Now, grab this piece down here. Just kind of do the reverse. Try to lift it up, and it's keyed, just like everything else. Luckily, so try to make sure this little key post right here fits onto this one right here. And there we go. Push it together. Make sure it locks in place and double check the air box exactly where it needs to be. Now we're gonna start tightening things back up. So you wanna start tightening your air box lid. Double check it's on there tight every now and then. Make sure it hasn't come off while tightening. Really get this one as tight as you can without stripping it, obviously. That's pretty good. I want to get the one in the back. There's the one in the back. If you're ever curious of whether or not it's in the right place, it has a little rubber, uh, little plastic post back here. So you can just push this little part all the way back, and when it can't go back any further, it's in the right place. Stick your screwdriver in. Hang on. And twist. And now it's just going to be reverse order as far as uh, reconnecting all these little hoses. So make sure you got them all and just start going. This guy goes on here. This little one I tucked away goes on here. And this one I tucked behind the battery goes way on the bottom on this little valve next to the air box. Push them, make sure they're all the way on. Get your pliers. And I like to try to line these up where they used to be. Just the pliers are in case you can't do it by hand. For a fact, this one on the bottom is annoying. There you go. Now it comes time to reinsert your math. So take this guy out. Yep, make sure you leave any debris by behind. Feel free to use it to wipe your hands. Don't want to re-dirty your math just while putting it in. Then get your math sensor. And like I said, it can only go in one way. Grab that. Just position it in there. Line up with the screw holes. 
position them where they need to be, and screw in. And you don't want this thing to go in sideways, so just get it to where they're making contact with both the MAF and its posts. And then screw it in evenly. A few turns on one side, a few turns on the other. Just want to get it tight. These are pains you if you strip them. Just go on Spire Chat. They usually tell you what kind replaces them well. And that's your mouse sensor back in. Now screwing in a cross hatch is very important. And make sure there's une there isn't uneven torque, and it stops you from getting false readings. The worst thing you want is to get the mass sensor out to try and fix it and to break it in the process. Now we're just going to put electrical connections back on. Here's the mass sensor. Mine doesn't have a clip here, yours will have a clip. You want to take your electrical connector, this valve down here, clips on the top, slide it down, put it over the post, listen for the click. And last but not least, this blue guy right here for this valve. Again, listen for the click. The last thing you're just going to do is take these hoses you pulled up the airbox and just snap them back on. Now we're just going to reconnect the battery. So, grab your socket, grab the battery terminal, stick that on there, and tighten it. When this gets hard to do, take your socket, set to tighten, get a few good turns. That's nice and tight on there. Don't forget to put these little metal clips back on the airbox. Again, listen for them to click when you do it. The last thing you're probably ever going to want to do is turn the car on, double check everything is still going working. Yep, here we go.